so obviously there's been some coverage last few days about this video from January 6th. Mm -hmm. um, um, can you explain what you meant in the video by putting aside the Constitution? Well, I can tell you that I'm actually really encouraged. I'm encouraged that the left-wing media is actually talking about the importance of the Constitution, because I've actually been fighting for the last five or six years to ensure that every citizen in North Carolina has their constitutional rights. So I'm actually encouraged. Right, but in that video, you were talking about the Insurrection Act and putting aside the Constitution. I think I was actually talking about the fact that what had just happened was that they had put aside the Constitution, and what had happened is the uh, we've seen the overreach of the federal government when you had seven states that actually wanted to bring back the vote so that they could actually investigate cases where people had been under oath stating that there had been um, election fraud. Either they had been involved in it or they were concerned that it had happened. They'd heard witness of it. So um, I thought that it was time for us as we the people to stand up and say, you guys work for us because I believe everybody that's an elected official works for the people of the United States of America. America. And government doesn't give us our freedoms. It's actually God-given inalienable rights. Right. But but that's not, that wouldn't be the Insurrection Act, right? I mean, the Insurrection Act, you were talking about arresting traitors, a trees, people for treason. And you said if the police won't do it, and if the military won't do that, it. Those actually were not my words. I, mean, I have it. I can play it. Yeah. My, my words were not to arrest people for treason. Okay. Um, I was stating that when our government is not protecting the God-given inalienable rights of our citizens, that it is our duty to make sure that they understand that they work for us. And if that involves putting that aside the Constitution, then that's okay? Well, I say that uh, if you look at what the Insurrection Act does, I mean, you guys are the ones that said it was an insurrection, so why aren't you asking for the Insurrection Act to be enacted? No, I want to go back to the question that you didn't answer. I'm going to the question of why didn't you want, why didn't they call for that if, the, if it was an insurrection on January 6th? That's what the Insurrection Act was written for. Really why I'm here is because I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged that now the left is understanding that what we've seen over the last just four years of government lockdowns, of vaccine mandates, of open borders, even just two or three weeks ago, wasn't it every Democratic congressperson that voted to let non-citizens vote in our election, that's incredibly unconstitutional. When you look at the expansion of Title IX that Joe Biden has just put forth, that's incredibly unconstitutional. So I'm actually very encouraged that the left is now saying that the Constitution needs to be upheld because we haven't heard that from the left. And we haven't heard that when they wanted to, I don't know, stack the Supreme Court or they wanted to do away with, uh, what about spying on your enemies? Like it was found to be Obama and Clinton did against President Trump while they were running against him. What about using the judicial, um, you know, weaponizing the judicial um, side of government against I mean, citizens? You know, so my point is this, as superintendent, I want for every citizen in, in the United States and in North Carolina to understand what the Constitution says. And so I want to bring civics back into our classroom. I absolutely want it to be upheld. I believe the Constitution is the greatest government document ever written. And I believe that if we are upholding it, then we're going to be safe, we're going to be prosperous, and we're going to be free. So that, so let me, I, I'm going to take that to me that you are no longer talking, that you no longer are calling for putting aside the Constitution. Actually, that was four and a half years ago, and most serious voters are focused on how we're going to fix the education problems right now that we have, the incredible um, you know, illiteracy rates that just keep skyrocketing, the increase in drugs and violence um, in our schools, 84% increase. I think you guys even reported on that a few months ago in just five years. They're concerned that our students don't know how to read and write, and yet my opponent is bragging about graduation rates and we know that they're inflated and so it's time for us to get back to a sound basic education in North Carolina and that's what I intend to do. Um, one thing that you did mention apparently in an audio file that was put out today had to do with um, uh, sort of promoting the idea of elective Bible studies in middle and high schools. 
not Bible studies, no. I said elective study of the Bible. And actually, it was, I think, maybe 18 or 19 years ago that Mark, that Mike Johnson, who is right now the Speaker of the House, actually put that in. And it's in our bylaws in North Carolina that if we wanted to study the Bible in terms of a historical te text or because of legislative reasons or whatever it might be, um, that that could be an elective that students could choose to take if they wanted to take that. Okay, because I was going to say, I think that there are some that have it already. Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I just want to expand that opportunity. Okay. Um, I just want, and, and just to give you one more opportunity to respond. I mean, you've had a lot of people talking about this video. As you say, it was from four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. It was. You know. And unfortunately, you know, it's sad that um, everybody's bringing everything up four and a half years ago when right now our kids are about to go back to school. And I don't know if you know this, but last year, 1,473 teachers were assaulted on the job. We now are 6,000 teachers below what we need to have a qualified teacher in every classroom. And we, you know, people are begging for opportunity scholarships. They're begging to put their kids somewhere else so they can get a quality education. And I really think that that's what every person is concerned about. Education is probably the most uniting issue that we have. Why do we want to make it divisive? Regardless of your race, religion, or politics, everyone is concerned that our children are not prepared to be able to pursue careers where they're going to be successful. Right. You had mentioned, I know, in the past, calling the schools indoctrination centers. I think. Mm -hmm. um, how will, how should a person who say is a teacher in one of those schools, how should they have confidence that you're going to be somebody who will advocate for their school? Well, I've already been advocating, as I said, for the last five years, and as I'm going across the state, and I have been actually for the last three years, what I'm hearing from the teachers is they are tired of being forced to do things in their classroom that had, and, and participate in, um, uh, in programs that have nothing to do with children's academic success. They want the, the, that heavy hand of the U.S. Department of Education to be removed from them so they can do what they were called to do. I think every teacher it wants the best for their students. I think that teaching is a calling, and I think that we have been wrong in not prioritizing our spending to be students first and in the classroom first rather than on special interest groups and, and different programs that are not helping our students to be academically successful. I know there are some in the Republican Party at the national level that have called for um, the, the breakup of the, the Federal Department of Education. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think that when you say those words, it causes everybody a lot of fear, which is why I think the first thing that I need to do once I get in is we need to have an audit of finances um, to figure out where our money is going. And we also need an audit of programs. I think our government is really great at offering programs and they usually have a great, you know, they. They have good intentions, but if we've been doing something for 15 and 20 years and we can't see that it has helped our kids academically, in character development, or in career preparedness, I think it's time to cut the ties and put that money towards something that is going to be productive for our students. So I think once we get in there and figure out, wow, we have a lot of extracurricular spending, I'll call it, that's not really being focused on student success, um, I think that they will probably be less fearful of saying, okay, back off, we don't, we don't need your money, um, and, and we're going to do it just as a state. But, I mean, you are aware, though, that, that it's federal money that pays for a lot of the, for example, school lunches for children yes. who, who are, you know, low income. I and, do. And, and for the extra teachers and things like that. I do. But at the same time, people need to recognize that the federal government, along with every dollar that they give us, there is an expectation that we are going to push an agenda that comes from them. And along with that comes a lot of strings. And so what I'm saying is let's get to the bottom of what is helpful and what is not helpful. And then we'll determine whether what our relationship is gonna look like with the U.S. Department of Education. I don't think that we can just blindly say, yes, we need to do everything they tell us to do because we need those dollars. I think um, money matters, but it matters more how you're spending it. Okay, anything else you wanna add? Um, I would just like to say that um, I believe that North Carolina, we've been the number one place to have a business, to start a business for the last couple of years, and I think it's time for us to make North Carolina the number one place to raise a family and the number one educational system, and I think we can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time.